Hi everyone, I'm here with a book that we're having a giveaway for called Picturing America and it's by Hudson Talbot. Picturing America includes some of Thomas Cole's most beloved paintings beautifully framed by Talbot's watercolor illustrations. Readers and art enthusiasts of all ages will be moved by Cole's immigration story and his passion for capturing and preserving America's natural beauty. Hudson Talbot wrote and illustrated From Wolf to Woof, United Tweets of America, River of Dreams, and It's All About Meow, and he illustrated numerous picture books including Newbery Honor winner Show Way by Jacqueline Woodson and Leonardo's Horse by Jean Fritz. An ALA notable and Boya Honor book. He lives in the Hudson Valley of New York and New York City. Well, I live in the Hudson Valley too. So this author lives near me, apparently. Some of the advanced praise for Picturing America is that readers will fall in love with landscape in this captivating, inspiring picture book. Talbot does a fine job capturing an artist's life while offering a history lesson as well as an early put to protect the environment. Talbot has produced an accessible and inspired introduction to an important influential promoter of the unspoiled American landscape. Hudson Talbot, author of River of Dreams, takes readers on a unique journey through the life of Thomas Cole, father of the Hudson River School of Painting. From his humble beginnings to his development of America's first formal art movement, Picturing America is on sale as of September 4th. It's for ages 6 to 8, has a retail price of $17.99, and is a stunning kid-friendly biography of Thomas Cole. So let's take a look at this book. Like I said, we're having a giveaway, so you'll want to like, comment, subscribe to us on YouTube, share this video, they're all entries in the giveaway, and then go to the blog post which is linked in the video description, and there's a widget that you can enter. Thomas Cole was a curious boy. He was always looking for something new to draw. He and his sister Sarah took their sketchbooks whenever they went out wandering in the English countryside. The hedgerows were a good place to find something, a gnarly tree, a bug, or perhaps a hedgehog if they were lucky. The landscape of their homeland had become a patchwork of farms and fields dotted with villages like their own Bolton. Thomas and Sarah usually had to search far for something they hadn't already drawn. What truly sparked Thomas's imagination were the stories he heard of America and its vast wilderness. He dreamed of going there even though his sisters laughed at the idea. But Thomas's dreams of America burned brighter as he watched England change. The change that came to England was called the Industrial Revolution. It brought hard times to the Cole family for machines were now taking the place of humans. Thomas's father had to close his workshop because he could not make goods as cheaply as the big factories. The family decided it was time to seek their fortune in America. Thomas's dream was coming true. They arrived in Philadelphia in the summer of 1818 after a four week voyage. Only three of Thomas's seven sisters came along. The Coles decided to try their luck in a new town out west in the, on the Ohio River called Steubenville. They had enough money for the girls and the parents to take the stagecoach across Pennsylvania. Thomas had to follow on foot. In Steubenville, the Coles made lots of high quality items, but it seemed that the town just wasn't ready for them. They tried many things to make ends meet, but life for the immigrant family was a struggle. Meanwhile, Thomas's artistic skills kept improving. All his years of drawing were now helping him with his decorative designs. He drew every day, always pushing himself to do better. Then one day, he got a lucky break. A traveling portrait painter came through Steubenville and befriended him. He showed Thomas how to blend oil paints on canvas, and then he lent the boy a book on fine art. 
He had never seen art like that before. Suddenly Thomas knew what he wanted to do with his life. So began Thomas Cole's journey to becoming an artist. He followed the example of the traveling artist and walked to neighboring towns looking for painting jobs, but he had no luck. After weeks of tramping around the countryside, Thomas returned to Steubenville with only a dollar in his pocket. Worse, he found his family had moved again. Thomas followed them to Pittsburgh to help them start a new business. But Thomas felt he needed to make his future in a place where people would pay for art, even if it meant walking. For the second time, Thomas walked across Pennsylvania, this time with his art supplies strapped on his back and a tablecloth for an overcoat. In Philadelphia, he found work painting vases, but that didn't last for long. Winter in Philadelphia was hard. Thomas was tired and lonely, but kept his dream alive by drawing constantly. Sometimes the guards at the art academy let him draw there at night. His spirits were lifted when he got word that his family had moved again, this time to New York City. The only room he could afford had no bed and no heat. He lived on bread and water. New York was the center of art and culture in America, and Thomas was happy to be there, even if it was just in an attic above his family. He now had a place to make his paintings and to show them to potential customers. Among his visitors was a merchant named Thomas Bruin, who liked Thomas's landscapes. He suggested that the young artist take the steamer up the Hudson River to see the real American wilderness. He even offered to pay for the ticket. Thomas had his first patron. The trip up the Hudson River was a voyage of discovery for Thomas. As he passed the wild mountain ranges and vast forests, Along the river's edge, he realized why he was on this journey. He was going there to paint America. He felt he had something to say, and he was on his way to find it. When the boat docked at Catskill Village, the passengers rushed out into the waiting coaches. They were all headed up the mountain to a new resort called the Catskill Mountain House. They were there to escape the heat of the city and to enjoy a new American invention called a vacation. There's the Catskill Mountain House up there. Thomas didn't care where he slept. He was there to draw. All summer long, Thomas wandered with his sketchbook from dawn to dusk, often sleeping under the stars. When autumn came, Thomas returned to the city. New paintings were soon crowding him out of his studio. Thomas convinced a friendly bookstore owner to put three of Thomas's pictures in his shop's windows. And one day, a famous artist named John Trumbull saw them. He ran and told his friends, I've discovered a genius. It's what we've been looking for, a style of art that's 100% American. Somebody named Cole has done it. Pure American landscapes, portraits of our country. He sat down to catch his breath and said quietly, the youth has done what I cannot do after 50 years practice. The friends bought Thomas's paintings and added them to a major ex exhibition at the American Academy. The work caused a sensation. Thomas was invited to put his work in more shows and people began talking about him. This one of his paintings called The Clove. People were astounded at the dramatic, natural beauty that Thomas captured on canvas. For city dwellers, nature had often been viewed fearfully from a distance. Now it was being celebrated. Thomas's view of America struck a chord with the public. The young nation was still a little unsure of itself, but Thomas's landscapes gave people pride in their beautiful land. He soon became the toast of New York. Despite his success, Thomas felt there was lots more to learn, and there was only one place to learn, Europe. Thomas's travels in Europe. Thomas stayed for three years in Europe, soaking up its art and culture. In London, he met the great English landscape painters his work was shown in exhibitions, but he was disappointed that the English didn't take it more seriously. After two lonely years, he left for Paris, then on to Italy. Thomas fell in love with Italy. The art, the history, the light, and the colors all inspired him. The pasta was good too. In Florence, he studied the art of the great masters. In Rome, he sketched the ruins left by ancient Roman Empire. In Rome, he sketched the ruins left by the ancient Roman Empire and wondered how and why such a great power fell. 
By the time he sailed for home, Thomas was a changed man. His view of the world had grown far beyond his beloved Catskill Mountains. He had more to say. When Thomas returned to the Catskills, he became troubled by how much the wild landscape had disappeared, just, at a ha just as it had in England. He feared that the industrialization of America would lead to its destruction. He wanted to send a warning. It had to be a statement that was powerful, even epic. He came up with an idea for a series of paintings inspired by his time in Rome. He called it the Course of Empire. It included five scenes showing the rise and fall of a great empire. It's beginning in the wilderness, living in harmony with nature, becoming too powerful, falling from power, returning to wilderness. It shocked the public and made him the most famous art and made him the most famous artist in America. Thomas returned every summer to the studio he rented on a farm near Catskill Village. It was there that he met and fell in love with the farmer's niece, Maria Bartow. They were soon married and moved into the main house, sharing it with her sister, sharing it with her sister's uncle and many house guests. Thomas's art students also joined him there to go sketching in the mountains and soon there were cold children. It was a busy household. Thomas loved the way the houses of ancient Rome were decorated, so he gave his own walls a similar treatment. It was his way of sharing the inspiration of Italy with everyone who came to see his home. He never lost his love for decorative painting, nor for Italy. Thomas still loved to wander the hills with his sketch pad, but as the years passed, he used the time more for thinking. He looked back on his life and wondered if he had actually made a difference in the world. People often said that his art showed what it meant to be American. Now he simply wanted to show what it meant to be human. To do that, Thomas created a series of paintings portraying a person's journey through four stages of life. He called it Voyage, he called it The Voyage of Life, and it became his most famous work. Reproductions of it are still sold today. Childhood. The first painting shows an innocent child in a golden boat at dawn, protected by a guardian angel. Youth. By noontime, the child is now a young man. The angel behind as he goes out into the world to follow his dreams. Thomas probably remembered his own journeys across Pennsylvania on foot when his dreams kept him going. Manhood. The man is now middle-aged, like Thomas. He is lost in a storm with a broken rudder. Alone in the world, he prays for help. Old age. It is now evening and the old man, old age, it is now evening, and the man is old and humbled by life's journey. His work is done. The angel has returned to guide him home. Sadly, Thomas did not live to see this last phase of his own life. He died of a sudden illness six years after painting this series. America mourned his passing. Thomas Cole left the world too soon, but his work launched a movement that became far more important than anything he could have imagined. His genius for capturing the American landscape drew other artists to follow him. Frederick Church, Asher Durand, and many others were inspired to paint natural scenery in a style that became, in a style that came to be known as the Hudson River School of Art. It was the first art movement that was truly born in America, but Thomas's influence went much farther than art. Americans gradually came to understand his message of saving the environment while there was still time. By the 1870s, large areas of pristine wilderness were being by the 1870s, large areas of pristine wilderness were being preserved from destruction. They eventually became our first national parks. This in turn led to the modern environmental movement, which continues to fight today to protect our forests, air, water, and wildlife. But the most important gift that Thomas Cole left us was his perspective on his beloved new country, the vision of a young artist for a young land full of promise and freedom. He showed us a way of picturing America the Beautiful. Another painting here. So this is a very nice um, book. And there's our author, 
Hudson Talbot. So you can get this book in bookstores and on Amazon. And I will put a link to purchase the book right in the video description. It just went on sale September 4th. It's a brand new book out there. And it's a Penguin Rand, it's published by Penguin Random House, Penguin Young Readers. So we thank Penguin Random House for the book they're providing for the giveaway. Please go to the blog. That link will also be in the video description. And I hope you all have a great day and I hope you enjoyed this book. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.